Hi folks, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to do another battery experiment <coughs> and uh, test uh, one more type of electrolytes that I haven't tested so far and uh, to review a little bit uh, what I've discovered so far on the biocell is that the the best uh, electrolyte combination is phosphoric acid and and a salt uh, mixed to mixed together. And so far, I've tried salts of phosphoric acid, and I've which makes phosphates, and I've tried uh, sulfates from sulfuric acid as a salt, and now I'm going to try uh, chlorides from hydrochloric acid as a salt in the thing, and then I'll have I'll have all the acids. Uh, basically the mineral acids covered anyway okay so uh, <clears throat> anyway we're gonna I'm gonna do that and uh, and the purpose of that is so that I can get started on building uh, my self-charging battery for my solar system which I have all the materials uh, here to do and I've got 50 of these uh, galvanized steel plates that I'm going to use for the uh, negative uh, on the batteries and <clears throat> I'm going to take in uh, to get maximum surface area I'm going to use both sides of the plate and I'm going to coat it with the titanium dioxide like this piece of uh, zinc right here that I'm going to use in the test today except I'm going to I'm going to coat both sides of it but for this test today I'm just going to use one side I've got this little piece of uh, uh, copper tape on there for when I do make it uh, do both both sides for the next test <coughs> okay and then uh, and then I've got uh, this is graph oil and I've got some graph oil here on a piece of copper tape for this test but I've got 300 square feet of uh, graph oil roll here and I'll cut two of these pieces uh, one for each side of these of these zinc plates here to build the uh, the self-charging battery with. Now this battery, <coughs> uh, the biocell, I mean I can tell already that the best use for the thing is going to be as a uh, as a, as a charging battery and uh, it's not a, a super powerful battery like most batteries but uh, it makes up for that by the fact that you don't have to charge it up. Now with a regular chargeable battery you have to put energy into the battery and you never get all that energy back out okay now this this battery though it's not as strong but you don't have to put any energy into it so all the energy that you get out of it is essentially free energy okay so the best way to use this thing is just keep it self-charging all the time in other words keep it discharging uh, keep it in discharge mode uh, and balance that the discharge out with the self-charging ability, and that's the uh, that's the the goal here, is to to build a, a battery that it can just discharge it all the time, and have that charging uh, at a higher voltage, so it charges up my 36 volt battery system for the solar. Okay, so I've got that, and basically all you need to, to build these batteries is is a metal of some type. You can use the aluminum some steel, zinc, uh, whatever and then you need titanium dioxide which I've got a huge supply I just restocked on this stuff and then you need graphite and you don't have to use this graph oil you can take graphite like this and this is a, uh, a graphite powder used to as a seed lubricant it's a cheap way to buy it and uh, and it's pretty pretty fine stuff and uh, so then you can put that on paper though and you, and you can make the use paper for the other instead of the graph oil. The graph oil is pretty cheap though I mean I've got 300 square feet it's like 25 cents a square foot by the time you uh, uh, figure the total cost on it and then for the electrolyte your phosphoric acid it's a it's a weak acid but it works great uh, with this battery which you can't use sulfuric or hydrochloric acid in the battery that it destroys the titanium dioxide so you can't use that but phosphoric acid works really good and you can buy this uh, rust-oleum rust remover which is uh, the only ingredient listed on it is phosphoric acid although it has a little coloring or something in it too 
but uh, basically that's all you that's all you need and and what I would suggest is is that people get your materials together and then if the grid goes down and you need power then there's some incentive to, to, to build the battery and and use it and and but until you need people need power there's really no incentive to, to build this battery and, but uh, it's for an for an emergency power supply for preppers if you think the, the grid's going to go down eventually which it, I think it will then this would be a good thing to to build all right so uh, anyway let me clear all this off and then I'll be back and we'll start the battery build I'll be back all right I'm ready to put this thing together I've already put a little graphite on the top of the graph oil for extra energy storage I've hooked up the electrode connectors here and I got a little bit of phosphoric acid on graphite on the on our separator paper here which I'm going to put right on top here like that I'm not getting any voltage what's going on here must be shorted out Right, let me figure out what I'm doing wrong and I'll be back. Alright, I'm back. I had bad wire. Okay, so I've got uh, 104.1.042 uh, volts going on there, and we'll test the amps now and see what we get here. Let me get a. Alrighty, 104.3. Here we go. 3, 2, 1. And we've got 128. 128 milliamps on that. Okay, and we're back up to 0.92 in climbing. Okay, so it looks like the chlorides, uh, our maximum is 640 milliamps with phosphoric acid and uh, and trisodium phosphate, I think. <clears throat> with 640 uh, milliamps, so we're nowhere nowhere close to that. So it uh, looks like to me that the chlorides don't work as well. All right, now I'm back, and I've cleaned up the battery plates here, and uh, prepped them again for a rebuild. Uh, this time without any chloride salts in it. So what I've got is my zinc plate here. And this is coated with titanium dioxide, uh, distilled water, and about 20% by volume of uh, PVA glue. And then it's uh, painted it on the uh, zinc, just on one side. And then I dipped it in um, uh, borax to uh, to set the gel on the on the plate. So that's our negative right there and then I've used in this um, uh, well for the positive back to the graph oil again I've got a layer of graphite painted on that and uh, and then I've got a piece of this is uh, packing paper which is about the same porosity as um, typing paper but it's a little thinner and so I get a little better results uh, using that and I have a, a coat of uh, graphite painted on the, on this paper here so all I have to do now is put on some phosphoric acid uh, between the layers and put the cathode side together and then I'm going to put it all in build it inside this paper bag or this plastic bag here and then uh, so that'll conserve the uh, the water and then I'll try to then I'll test it and we'll put it under a load and see how long it'll last uh, in, the, in the bag there before it runs out of water. Alright, so what I have to do first is take some phosphoric acid. Alright, there's probably a couple of uh, maybe three milliliters total. Okay, and then we're going to take our cathode whoops, flip it over here, 
like this. And then we're going to wrap this excess around it. And then we'll, if I have to add water to the cell, which I probably will, I'll put a little in there and that paper will absorb the, absorb the water. Alright, so now I've got the cathode completely covered. And we'll take that and slip it inside the paper, the plastic bag. Like this. Get it in there. There we go. And we're going to leave a little, a little bit exposed here to to uh, connect to there like that and then we're going to take our negative here and we're going to slip it inside on top of that and the weight of the uh, of the zinc plate should give it a good contact. I can get it in there without pushing the other one in too far. And right now I'm shorting it out, I think. And I kind of pushed it in there a little bit to keep it isolated. Alright, so now let's see what kind of volts we have. We have 1032 in climbing, 1035. Six, seven, eight. So we're going to be in the 105 range, it looks like. And it was probably higher than that, but I shorted it out, putting it all together, I'm sure. Alright, so we're at 1.052 and it's slowing down, but it's still climbing. So let's flip it over now. And what kind of amps we got. We'll put it on 200 milliamps there. Get my finger in there to hold it down. Here we go. Three, two, one. And yet we're over 200 milliamps. So it's, uh, it's got good output. I could switch it over to the uh, switch it over to the 10 amp range here and we can hit it again. see what we got on our amps. Ready? Whoops, I better turn it on. Three, two, one. Ooh, 7.5, uh, 7.3, something like that. So it's uh, 730, 750 milliamps. That's some real nice juice from that little battery. Okay, so now let's hook it up and see if it'll power the uh, little oscillator that I built. Alright, I'll be back here in a, a minute. Alright, I'm back. And I ended up breaking off the little uh, copper tab I was hooking up to, so I had to bend up a corner of the, of the electrode in there to... Uh, let's hook it up here. And see if we've got enough to power our little LED there. There's our magnet. Now it lights up. Oh, there's a blink. Yep, it does light up. There it is. Alright, so we've got... It is enough power to light it up, sort of. Let's see if I can get it in a spot where it lights all the time. Right in here, usually. There it goes. Alright, so... Sort of. There. Alright, it's lit up. Now let's see what kind of a current and that voltage we got right now. Alright, so we're at, oh look, we're at 94. It actually increased some. 